I'm Anurag Gupta from India, and we're, we're doing our Boeing 737-800NG type rating at the Baltic Aviation Academy. We've been reading the forecasts uh, that India plans to become the number three world biggest uh, commercial aviation market by 2030. So I wonder, these rapid changes in uh, the commercial aviation industry in your country happening at the moment, do you feel them personally? Yes, of course. The market, the aviation market in India is booming. Every day you hear the airlines are inducting more aircraft and we are buying the most advanced aircraft in the world at present. We've got the youngest fleets in the airlines currently flying and we've ordered some more new aircrafts coming. So the industry is booming every day and even the business entrepreneurs, the big economy movers in India, they're also interested in the aviation market these days. So we have like so many small business entrepreneurs entering, entering into the industry and they're interested in moving some air charters, air ambulance and short haul flights because in India we've got a lot of connections but still at the moment the small cities are not connected well. So now the focus is on them as well. So you mean there also are many business opportunities? Yes, they're growing every day because a lot of people are investing money into the aviation industry in India. So the market seems to be growing every day. Yeah, and many startups as well. Yes, a lot of new companies are coming up and they're starting short haul flights and now like India we've started in the logistics as well. Now we have cargo flights running in India. So every day it is picking up some new lines and FTOs are coming up, everything. It's developing every day as the western part of the world. So if we're thinking on your commercial pilot career, uh, in which area uh, do you imagine your career mostly? See, it is a matter of choice, but if you get a choice, everybody wants to work for big airliners and fly the big jets. But at the same time, everybody needs should, should be available for the small airlines as well. Yes, uh, for me personally, I would like to fly in some airlines. And uh, what's about the competition among the pilots in your country? Yes, there's a great deal of com competition and as we see, we have about 6,000 unemployed pilots in the country at the moment. And of course, even if the industry is booming and we're inducting aircrafts every day, still doesn't mean that everybody will be employed. Uh, those people that uh, are not employed, what do you think are the reasons? See, any, anyways, you know, anywhere in the world, like you, if you consider United States of America, they've got, like they're the key players in the aviation in the world. But still, they're even not hiring as the Indian airlines are hiring at the moment. But at any time, 6,000 pilots can never be employed. There was a boom in the year 2005, 2006. A lot of people intended to become pilots. Now we have unemployed pilots who never wanted to be pilots, but just, you know, the charm of the industry and the good life of a pilot and good salaries attracted them and now they're into this field. So hopefully that, uh, it is hopeful that everybody gets a job, but still it is the you know, survival of the best. So how did you uh, choose uh, to start your professional career as a pilot? See, uh, at a very young age, jets flying over uh, always amused me. But uh, then when I was about to finish my higher secondary, then I had a larger view of the industry. And then I gave a thought over it. And I liked the profession. So I started with the commercial pilot profession. And those uh, six thousand un unemployed pilots, didn't they scare you? No, at that moment when I started they were about, uh, I never knew anybody who didn't have a job. But in two years India produced more than six thousand pilots. And any industry in the world cannot induct six thousand pilots at one time. You need more than six hundred aircrafts. So tell me a little bit, uh, how did you choose the Baltic Aviation Academy? The Baltic Aviation Academy was uh, I found it over the internet and then I had connected with Ritas, who's the regional sales manager, taking up the department for managing Indian students. And then I checked it met all the JAR FCL requirements as well as the requirements laid down by the Indian DGC. And then we figured it out and it, had a, it was a big group. So we thought that, okay, we'll do our training from Baltic Aviation Academy. And is it a competitive advantage for Indian pilots to study in, to study in the Western Europe country? See, at the moment, if you say that uh, the world leaders in type rating training and simulator productions are providing type ratings in India as well, but 
at the same time they don't have much simulators so for the same reason since the very beginning people have been going abroad especially to Europe for their type rating endorsements so practically one has to meet the requirements that is the basics but still Europe you get an edge over the other parts of the world if you come and do your type rating because JAR FCL standards are recognized all over the world yeah. and all are mostly the ICAO contracting states so you're recognized if your dreams uh, could come true how do you imagine your professional pilot career in let's say five years what do you think See if my dreams are realized then I see myself as a commander in some airlines working as a captain for some airlines what do you think, uh, what it takes uh, to become a leading pilot in a, very well, in, in a very good brand, in a recognized brand? What qualities does it take? See, first is your hard work and dedication and then your enthusiasm and your overall qualities as a leader and as a person because you're the, uh, after a certain age you need to take ho hold of the responsibilities. So you should flourish as a person more and you should keep up with the hard work which is required in the industry. So, like India, it's a very interesting case uh, in, that, in that point of view uh, because very young people have to be very uh, responsible as uh, the age of the pilots is very, you know, they are much younger than in the... Western yes, I countries. do agree that uh, you'll find a lot of young Indian pilots, but at the same time they've been training and they've been requiring the met required standards before starting their jobs. Like if an Indian pilot at the age of 18 comes to Europe for his type rating, he's passing the same skill test as a 40-year-old would do. So he's meeting the standards, but of course with age you get some experience. So there they might lack, but at the end of the day, I don't think so that they're behind anybody. Because they've been flying all over the world. I wonder, uh, are Indian pilot, pilots uh, as genius as uh, Indian IT <laughs> programmers? Yes, we see them uh, in a very good and flourished and a good image all around the world and they've got good communication skills as well. So we could compare like the industry? Yes, we can always compare and then they're working hard enough. Yeah, sure. All the way to success then. Okay, uh, and uh, what does it feel uh, to study in Europe? What do you think? How do you feel it here? Studying in Europe is uh, always good and you've got uh, good teachers available, nice programs with the studies and uh, always JAR FCL, we've been referring the, to the same stuff in India as well. Mm -hmm. So it is not a big change for as the aviation basics are concerned as if you go to FAA in US, the Federal Aviation Administration, their basics are different like small things like fuel and all, they don't use different units. But as we compare it with India and Europe, they're the same. Mm -hmm. So it is somewhat like the same thing you're studying. And maybe it's uh, also better for your aviation English. Aviation English, everybody is already done before coming for the type rating because it's a prerequisite. And most of the people who've trained abroad for the FTOs already have a, a aviation English language proficiency. And I don't uh, ever see a problem with Indians having a language proficiency. Level four. Level six. Oh, I don't know. It's a huge competition for the Western pilots. I think so. Yes, because you know the um, official language in India after Hindi is English. So most and for the teaching language in every aspect of aviation, it, it is English in India. Mm -hmm. That is the major main language. But in European countries, you can see, like in Germany, you're taught in German as well. You're not taught in English, so they might have problems regarding the language. But it has never been a problem with India. According to the official uh, of the aviation ministry in India, India is celebrating the 2000, uh, this year, 2011, uh, is the celebration of the civil aviation cen uh, centenary. Uh, so, I mean, like uh, 100 years ago, it was the first historic uh, commercial flight uh, in India carried out in uh, 1911. So, I wonder, what does the whole aviation industry mean to our country? See, if you compare the systems, they've increased a lot and now the airlines have picked up and I think them as the life support system of the transportation in India. Because if you want to travel from one city to another, aviation flying by air is the only route and you need the industries running for that. You can, imagining life without aviation is a bit too difficult in today's present world. You cannot travel to 
different places and people have, with the economies booming, you need aviation as a means of transportation. I remember you once went, mentioned that you have been doing uh, business previ previously, right? Uh, so I, wa I wonder, does it help or not in being a pilot? And uh, will like your experience in doing business help you in uh, doing the professional pilot's career? See, if you compare it, if you like uh, link it directly, you don't get any gain from business in the piloting career. But at the end of the day, you learn a lot of aspects of the life. You need learn a lot of new skills in business which you can never learn in the airline industry and if you're a good entrepreneur and you need know the skills you can always once you've attained certain level in flying and you can always get into company administration and look other works of the airlines as well yeah so like uh, it is a huge chance that in 10 years we'll talk to you like a president of a huge airlines <laughs> company 10 years i think wish you that yeah. yes. thanks a okay lot. thank you yeah.